Uh, my name is Alex Dunlap. I work for Amazon Web Services. Uh, I was talking to Dan this morning. He mentioned that there was a cancellation um, for the speaker who was supposed to present in this slot, so I offered to do a, a quick demo of the dynamic content for su uh, support in Amazon CloudFront, uh, which many of you probably heard uh, Tal Saraf talk about uh, during the key keynote this morning. Um, it's kind of a funny conversation. Dan said something along the lines of, well, you have about an hour, uh, a couple hours to get ready for this. Is that going to be enough? And I said, well, you know, we really built this thing to be very simple, um, so I hope so. And uh, sure enough, uh, spent a little bit of time um, between the keynote and now and have a very quick demo that shows what you can do with CloudFront uh, dynamic content and static content on a single site. Um, so let's first start with just some content. Um, so basically what we see in, in this, um, for this use case is that we see customers who want to combine static content and dynamic content into one website and help deliver it to their end users as quickly as they can. Um, so what I've done is created just two very simple things. One is a piece of static content. So this is going to be a picture of my dog uh, before he got a, a haircut. And then I have a very simple um, dynamic site. Uh, this dynamic site just very simply says the, the time in UTC. And I can refresh it, and you can see that the seconds will, will increment along the way. So this is my dynamic content, and uh, the picture of the dog was the static content. Um, my goal is to get these all onto one website and uh, to accelerate all of the content through Amazon CloudFront. Uh, and to do it using relative paths. Um, so basically reference everything from a single domain. Uh, so that's what I'm going to show you here today. Um, so there's basically five steps I'm going to follow. I'm going to do these just, just live here as we go. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a CloudFront distribution. So what is a CloudFront distribution? A CloudFront distribution is uh, basically the organizing principle for Amazon CloudFront. It takes content um, for your users, caches it on the edge, and it has its own domain name. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say cre uh, create distribution. Um, I'm going to choose a download distribution. This means I'm going to create a distribution that speaks uh, HTTP. Um, I'm going to hit continue. Uh, it's going to ask me for um, my origin. What an origin is, is where you're holding the original copy of your uh, data. So I've used an Amazon S3 bucket. Amazon S3 is AWS's simple storage service. Um, so it's an object store. I put the photo of the dog in there. And um, I'm going to use that as my origin. Um, there's some additional settings, um, whether I want to enforce HTTPS, um, the kind of cache po uh, pol caching policies I want to use. Um, I'm just going to leave those all at my, as my default. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, uh, I've got a CNAME field. And so um, what, what I would do here is enter in an alias for my distribution, something that my customers would remember. So we could do, you know, let's do www.cloudfrontdemo.com. And let's say continue. And I'm going to create my distribution. Um, so that's step one. And what's happening right now, if I can expand this a little bit, uh, you can see in progress, um, Amazon CloudFront is going out to our network of 30 edge locations and telling it about this new distribution that I've just created. Uh, this distribution has a unique domain name, and I can also access it via this um, uh, C name, um, www.cloudfrontdemo.com, www.cloudfrontdemo.com. If all I wanted to do was deliver static content, I'd be done. Um, but we also want to deliver um, our dynamic content. So let's scroll down here. You can see for this distribution. Um, what I want to do next is create a second origin for the same distribution. And so what I'm going to do is for my dynamic stuff, uh, I'm going to select a Amazon EC2 instance. So I actually have quite a few going here, as you see. Um, the one that I want, let me just actually copy and paste it because it's going to be a little bit easier to do it that way. I just take the domain name of my Amazon EC2 instance that's hosting my dynamic content. I can paste it in here. And again, it's going to ask me some basic information about the 
about the origin, um, which port does it speak over, things like that. Um, since that's not valid, but it should be. Uh, I have the HTTP in front of it. And so now what I've done is I've added a second origin uh, to my distribution for my dynamic content. Um, one more step I need to do is to tell the system when to use the static content and when to use the uh, dynamic content. So I'm, we use a concept here called a cache behavior or behavior. Um, so what I can do is create a, a behavior that says anything that begins with dynamic, I want to use the EC2 instance as my origin. And again, I've got some additional um, parameters around how caching will work with that behavior. I hit next, and I can specify the orders in which these uh, rules are applied. So what the system is going to do is it's going to say, if I see anything that begins with dynamic, I'm going to use the EC2 instance as my origin. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go back to my um, S3 bucket. So that gets us through um, these first three steps. Um, the fourth step is to create a CNAME in Route 53. Um, that's really only for uh, to make things easier on your users. Um, but I've actually gone ahead and, and done that. Uh, if you, Route 53 is Amazon's DNS domain name service um, as a service offering. Um, so you'll see that I've created a uh, another domain name here, which is www.cloudfrontdemo.com. I'm actually using just www here. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes for a CloudFront distribution to go in, into sync. Um, so rather than having us all sit here for 15 minutes, I created one before the presentation, which is why I was using www2 before. This is identical, um, only it's, it's already done. Um, you can see that the, this is a, there is a C name to that distribution ID. Um, next step, um, I have some very simple HTML that says I'm going to combine both my static and my dynamic content. Notice that what I'm doing here is I'm using relative paths, so I'm not specifying a fully qualified domain name. All of this is just going to come off of www.cloudfrontdemo.com. And I'm going to pull up the dog, and I'm going to pull up um, the uh, dynamic site in an iframe. And if I put it all together, you can see I have both my static content and my dynamic content in one page. If I hit refresh, the dynamic content will change. The static content will not. So you can see the clock ticking there. Very simple demo. The benefits of this are, first, uh, everything is, is being um, routed through CloudFront's uh, network of edge locations. So here I'm in New York City. We've got a couple of locations here in New York City that I'm probably connecting to. Uh, they will hold the local copy of the image of the dog there in cache. And so I, I don't need to go all the way back to the origin, which is in, um, I put it in AWS's region on the West Coast. Uh, for the dynamic content, what I will do is I will make a connection to the New York Edge location and then travel over Amazon's, pass an Amazon monitors and manages back to my EC2 instance, which again is running on the West Coast. So that gives me better performance on my dynamic content. And because it all uses relative paths, it's very easy to configure, very easy to use. I said I did this in about an hour. Um, so that's the demo. It's pretty quick. Um, we'll take a uh, couple, three questions um, that you folks might have. Oh, there's one. Yeah, so um, what we do with live streaming actually uses some of these features as well. Um, we give we let customers run uh, their own, um, and you can use a variety of different technologies, whether it's Adobe's FMS, um, Microsoft's Smooth Streaming. Uh, you run an EC2 instance, which is your uh, streaming point for your live content. You create a CloudFront distribution on top of that. CloudFront will cache the um, uh, video fragments at the edge. Um, it will also cache the manifest files for usually it's a couple of seconds. Um, so the neat thing about uh, our approach to live streaming is you really get full control over your entire 
uh, live streaming origin, um, which we think is, is gives you a lot of great flexibility. So from our perspective, you just need to have an origin and uh, stream it out to your cloud, and you, know, you take care of the delivery and everything. Yeah, so the question was, do we just need to run our origin for live streaming? Um, that That's roughly correct. Uh, we have a cloud formation template that makes it very easy for you to get started. Okay. Um, th tomorrow, during the Streaming Media East show, uh, we're doing a demo of live streaming. Okay, Come take a look at that. So what about the pricing? You, you just listed in your website. Question is about pricing. Uh, yes, if you go to aws.amazon.com slash cloudfront, you can see our pricing. Um, it's all pay for what you use. So you pay uh, for EC2, you pay by the hour. Uh, for CloudFront, you pay by the gigabyte and by the request. Other questions? All right, well, thanks, folks. I'll turn it over to uh, our next presenter.